Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I am your host, Chuck Fulkerson, for Sunday, June the 3rd, 2018. Hope everybody had a great, great trading day and a great trading week. We're going to have, go ahead and dive right in what we do each and every day here on the Daily Market Commentary. Take a look at the same 10 to 12 futures markets, identifying potential breakout trades and turning points. But the key to remember is we leave our lines on the charts. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, click that little subscribe button down below so that you will get the updates as they become available. So let's dive right in. Uh, Friday, I will tell you, I had a case of the Fridays and frankly didn't feel like doing a recording. And so I didn't. Um, and, uh, and so we had uh, some of th these are still Thursday's levels and Thursday's lines, but we did have a breakout trade, uh, which did trigger on Friday and it triggered uh, for a pretty nice runner. So we'll take a look at that. But let's go ahead and start with the S&P. The S&P did not get the breakout. So we did not get our breakout in the ES. And we're actually trading down a little bit uh, early in early trading uh, this evening down about three and a half points. So you know, looking at this on the weekend edition, I like to look at a slightly bigger picture. Uh, and looking at a bigger picture version of this on the daily chart, you can see that we are definitely up against it. Uh, we keep hitting our head off of this area. This is really what sets up for a pretty good breakout. And I do believe that we could have a breakout really kind of setting up in the S&P overall. Uh, looking at this on the daily chart uh, as well as the weekly both the daily and the weekly are setting up for a potential long breakout. Now, until I get a higher high on the weekly chart, uh, we, are, we are not in a confirmed uptrend on the weekly we're still in consolidation. Uh, we're also not in a downtrend because I don't have a lower low. Uh, so technically on the weekly chart, as an investor would say, this is more still of a sideways trading market. Uh, on the daily time period, we are chopping along sideways. So looking back to our one hour chart, this is still a potential long breakout trade uh, just above this region here. Now, what if, what if I wanna get long on a pullback? Well, there is this area back here uh, to potentially get long on a pullback if it does come back into this area uh, down in here. Now, what I don't like is all the wickiness that occurred in through here. And so it's one of those things where we'll see what happens this week in the political landscape because it's an ever-changing uh, feature to see what happens in the political landscape. But this could be a good reversal area there. Uh, let's look at that same area, though, in the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ, we did get the breakout. So our breakout is this blue line here. Uh, let me extend this to the right. So we did get our breakout. Uh, it moved up about uh, almost, you know, almost 50 points a little more than 50 points in the NASDAQ from our breakout, which is a really nice runner. Uh, do me a favor, if you were able to catch that breakout trade, leave it in the comment section down below. Uh, I'd like to hear, uh, I'd like to hear how, uh, how these breakout trades are working for you. This one uh, was a picture perfect version of a breakout uh, with, uh, with the breakout coming here. There was room to roam. We also had higher, uh, swing, uh, higher swing lows going into the breakout area. So, uh, you know, on a four hour chart, this is what it looks like. Now, this did come back on the four hour time period to the origin of a prior breakout. So this little move down through here. So we did come back to that region and now we're starting to drop from there. I wouldn't be surprised to see us pull back early in the week. Uh, and if we do pull back early in the week, let me get rid of this breakout line. Uh, there's a good chance that we will pull back to about where we broke out from. Now I like the NASDAQ breakout trade better than I, a uh, reversal uh, to the breakout, better than I like the S&Ps. So on the NASDAQ, it's this area right through here, right around 7,000. You've got that whole round number kind of uh, support down there to, to, help it, uh, to help it nudge along if we do get a pullback into this range. Not sure it's gonna get there though. And the reason being is because of some of this area right in through here. See this long lower wick right here? This long lower wick right here is uh, pretty indicative of 
of some strong support right through there. And I think that we might actually just get a little bit of a, of a, of a drop down from this. You know, we set in a little bit of a double top pattern here. Uh, if this breaks down, we may only break down into this region before reversing. So in that case, you might want to do candle to candle style of trading. If we reverse <clears throat> before reaching this area here um, in the NASDAQ. Looking at crude oil, crude oil falling off the map. Uh, if I take a look at crude oil, now we had a dashed line trade set up on crude. Let me move this down to the five minute chart so that you can see this dashed line trade. So if I look at this on a five minute chart, you can see price came into the level and then blew right through it. So this should be a cancellation of the trade if it breaks through this, this, uh, this area. Unfortunately, that means you miss out on this little run back up. Um, but that was that's okay because you're, you're just out of this position all in all. So uh, I, I really, 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 uh, you know, I, f I feel a little guilty not putting a video out on Friday um, because had I put the video out on Friday, this was our setup. Our setup was a little bit of a breakdown below here. Now we've actually just broken below there toward the end of the day. A little rally back up into this region could give us a good little reversal. So if I if I shrink this down to say the 15 minute time period and I look at the end of the day on Friday, you may get a, a little bit of a thrust back up into this region here. And this region here, 66.29 to 66.50, uh, could be a decent reversal in crude oil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch that to a purple line because we're finding that on a 15 minute chart. So it's slightly lower degree of probability. But all in all, I still think that's a pretty decent trade. Gold. Oh, look at this. We just continue to get nicked by a tick and it's not quite hit our level yet. Twice we've tried, twice we've failed. I'm still not taking it off my radar screen um, as it still is a, a valid level, a valid area, but uh, it's. I want to see the arrival as it comes into that region. So where we are now is we've already bounced off this level once with this. We bl blew through it earlier. Today, we are trading just basically flat. Not a whole lot happening right now in the world of gold. If you're so inclined, you might get a tiny reversal right here. Uh, if I move this over to the 15-minute chart, that should be a bit easier to see. A uh, little bit of basing there before I move down. Now, the reason I'm not in love with it is because this is actually the origin of the drop, right, where we have this this little rally, a little bit of sideways price action, and a fairly strong drop. And then it immediately gets retested, and that's really what causes the move down. So I'm not in love with that area. You still, It's still viable and still usable if your, if your risk tolerance is okay with it. Mine is not. Um, there's better choices out there to trade. Let's go ahead and slide over to the bond market. Now, in the bond markets, uh, what we are looking at is we have a little bit of a move down from this 121 high. Uh, we've got a little bit of some area up above us where we could get a, a further reversal. Uh, this was certainly the gap down on the uh, on the contract rollover. We still got our breakout sh uh, short. Uh, this was from the breakout long back here, but I'm going to leave this level in because this could still uh, work for us again coming th from here. If you were so inclined, uh, and you get, uh, uh, you know, you get below this 119.23 area, you could take another short uh, right below here. I think that we are, we have plenty of room to continue to go down, and I'm not sure if any of the levels above us are going to get visited for a solid reversal. Next, Aussie. So in the Aussie. Uh, on the Aussie, I had a I had a breakout, I had a long reversal set up right here, and we started to move out of it, and then I got punched in the face. Uh, the Aussie trade just failed, and there was no getting around it. It just uh, was a losing trade, so we'll delete that one off our charts. That's no longer going to be valid, obviously. Uh, and right now, I don't have anything in here that I like in the Aussie. In the Euro, we've actually bounced off of that daily level. Actually, it's a weekly level. We've bounced up off of that weekly level. Uh, for you investors, if we get a higher high, I mean, this is a picture-perfect reversal candlestick. This is a picture-perfect reversal candlestick pattern at a 
uh, an area of, of imbalance. If I get a higher high on this, this could be a nice long-term trade to, to run all the way back up to here. So keep an eye on this one. This could be one that you know could make your whole year if you stay in this thing for five or six or seven weeks and you've got enough size to it if it fits your risk tolerance. Remember, your risk parameters are what's key, but this is a good opportunity to look at candle to candle style of trading. Uh, as far as the shorter term stuff, right? So that's a weekly chart. As far as the shorter term stuff, uh, like I said, if we get higher than this candle's high, so this would really be buying above here. So we can actually put a little breakout long opportunity right here because that would be the, the prior week's high. So getting above the prior week's high would be getting above this area here. We're certainly not there yet, and it's going to take some time to get there. Canadian dollar, uh, there's nothing in here for me to really write home about. We had the huge sell-off uh, Thursday on the uh, on the on the uh, oh, the tariff information and the possibility of tearing up NAFTA. We'll really see if that happens. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly where that's going to go. Uh, and I think this was a reaction to the area over here to the left uh, from a from a pure supply and demand imbalance perspective. Um, this looks a perfect reaction to that area over here to the left. I, I will tell you that that's a perfect reaction that I didn't have set up to take the trade. So uh, I'd love to say I got it. I didn't get it. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at our last uh, trades here in the markets. Great British Pound, Japanese Yen, Nat Gas, and Copper. Um, looking here at our Japanese Yen position. So in our Japanese Yen, we've still got this area here in place. I'm going to put actually an area up above it and I'm going to change the below it to a dashed line. And the reason being is because we've put in a fair amount of lower swing lows and lower swing highs. Um, and at this point, if we do get in on the long, then I've got a very limited profit target. Because we're basing a long right here, if we drop down into this long, my profit target's going to be fairly small. So I'm going to need to switch that to a dashed line, changing my entry style for a confirmation entry if it comes in and then getting long as it comes back out. Looking here at copper, uh, so in copper I've got a potential breakout above this area here. It's not quite ready to go uh, as of yet. And that gas, we still have a reversal down here, and we're not uh, not anywhere near that number as yet, uh, as yet either. So I did say that this week I would look at soybeans. I'm going to take a look at that probably uh, tomorrow morning or Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow morning, if we don't have much movement in the overnight hours, I won't put out a new video. The new vi the next video will come out uh, Tuesday morning. We'll see exactly what that looks like. But uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, if there's anything I can do for you, please feel free to send me an email, Chuck at IIEFinancial.com. Uh, until tomorrow. Peace out. See you soon. Later.